Now then, that's what we call an unconformity. We say there's an unconformity between Cambrian strata and Devonian strata in the Grand Canyon. What does it mean? Well, what do those strata represent? They represent the deposits of successive seas. And if there are no deposits, there was no sea. And therefore, in the Grand Canyon, we know, because there's an unconformity between the Cambrian and the Devonian, that in Ordovician and Silurian time, the Grand Canyon was a land surface and was not covered by sea. We can spot unconformities in the Grand Canyon at this level also, beneath the Cambrian. This is another land surface in the Grand Canyon. And we can spot it because the strata of the Precambrian are tilted and the strata of the Cambrian are horizontal. This level was a land surface about 600 million years ago and was flooded by Cambrian Sea, which deposited this sandstone. And that sandstone is the record of Cambrian time, just in the same way as snow is a record of a snowstorm in winter. The snow melts away, but the sands and muds don't. The sand and mud remain as a permanent record of that time. The unconformity between the Cambrian and the Devonian, which is in here somewhere, is more difficult to spot. There's no obvious break in the rock record. The Cambrian strata are horizontal, and the Devonian strata are horizontal. We have to spot that unconformity by looking at the trademarks of the rocks which belong to the geological periods, by looking at the fossils in the strata. If a geologist were to climb up the Grand Canyon, he'd find, after he'd gone through Cambrian strata, that he didn't find any Ordovician, and he didn't find any Silurian fossils. We use that means of detecting unconformities throughout the rock record. And the kinds of fossils we use are graptolites in the Ordovician, and trilobites, and also fossils that we call ammonites. There are others as well, but they're three representatives of important groups. And every time we find an unconformity, we know that that represents a gap in the rock record of an area, a time at which the area was laid bare to the effect of wind and water, was laid bare as a land surface. There is a, an example of an unconformity, an example of several unconformities, in fact, in Ontario. And if you look at the geological rock record of Ontario, one can spot a similar kind of picture to that in the Grand Canyon. Like the Grand Canyon, the oldest rocks in Ontario, forming the basement for everything else, are metamorphic rocks, which were subjected to great heat and pressure in the roots of a mountain belt. These are north of Sudbury. After the mountain belt was eroded away, the land surface sank beneath sea level, and these sedimentary rocks were deposited on the old land surface, creating, therefore, an unconformity. These sedimentary rocks were in turn raised above sea level and eroded to form a land surface. And on that land surface, the limestones of the Niagara Peninsula and the Niagara Escarpment were deposited. They form the flat sheet on the horizon. The situation that you've just seen there on film can be depicted in this plasticine model. The lower layer here, or wedge, represents the earliest Cambrian strata found in Ontario, exposed over wide areas north of Sudbury, for example. This is very, very old rock, about 2,500 million years old. On top of it is this wedge, which represents the Galganda. That was deposited as sediment over the land surface, which is now represented by this break. This is then an unconformity between oldest Precambrian rocks and somewhat younger Precambrian rocks. Now, 
the top of the rock record in Ontario is represented by limestones, by limestones which are horizontal, and on this model are uh, the green plasticine. They're the Niagara Escarpment rocks that you saw in the film. Now, erosion is eating away at that top layer, and the actual position that we see today on Manitoulin Island that you saw in the film is rather like this. This is the Niagara Escarpment, a steep cliff at the edge of those Ordovician limestones, and there is the rather flat area of Precambrian sedimentary rocks, which is exposed over large areas to the north and to the west of Sudbury, for example. And eventually, that whole cap of Ordovician rocks will be removed, and Ontario will one day consist of bedrock only of Precambrian age. But that's a long, a long way off yet. It's interesting to know that, the, in fact, the boundaries between the geological periods themselves are the result of unconformities, unconformities in Europe because the geological time scale was devised in Europe. You may recognize some of the names, Devonian from Devon, for example. And they are areas where certain rocks are well exposed and well visible. And the breaks between the systems are breaks between the rocks exposed in certain areas. If the geological time scale had been devised in North America, then the breaks would not have been where they are in Europe. And one of the important tasks of the geologist is to correlate rocks, to match rocks from place to place, from continent to continent, using fossils, in the same way as the prehistorian would match the deposits of one cave with those of another cave by looking at the artifacts that he found in the rubble of the cave floor. That then is the beginning of the way that we interpret the rock record and the way that we use the vocabulary of geology in order to describe the rocks that we discover. The rocks in the Grand Canyon, for example, are not, I hope, to your eyes now just cliffs of white limestone or slopes of red shale. They are strata which belong to geological periods and bear evidence to the passage of time and contain in them fossils which are the record of the development and the history of life. In the next units, we shall be looking at the materials of geology, at the origin of minerals and at the origin of rocks. And in just about a month, you might be able to call yourself a geologist. that you know what a mineral is. Minerals are familiar to all of you. Some of you may be